Up for review today, the domestics come out and play a... Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the 2018 movie The Domestics. This is a movie that really could have so easily failed, but somehow it actually managed to find just the right formula to turn into a very enjoyable, if a bit mindless, thrill ride, and I genuinely really enjoyed it. But to get into more details than that, let's get into the categories. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And the plot of this one I gave a 17 out of 25. This followed the main characters of Nina and Mark West, a married couple that are on a bit of a... Uh, they're on the rocks. And uh, it doesn't help that they are actually also in a post-apocalyptic landscape. It is about three or four years after a biological warfare attack. And the only people that are surviving left on Earth are the people that the very, very small percentage of humans that were immune to the attacks, uh, chemicals, whatever they might have been. It was a bit ambiguous. Uh, and they're presented with a bit of a problem. They need to get about 200 miles from point A to point B, where they live now and where Nina's mother lives because she has mysteriously gone quiet on the CB radio and they need to figure out what's going on in the meantime trying to patch up their marriage along the way. And also along the way, unfortunately, are a roving barrage of various gangs, each one with a very unique aesthetic and name and gimmick. Uh, the Gamblers, the Cherries, the Nailers, the Plowboys, and the Sheets. Uh, the, if this sounds a bit familiar, you're absolutely right. This sounds an awful lot like the Warriors, and this does have a lot of similarities to it, right down to the ubiquitous radio DJ that's shouting out there to the land uh, and almost targeting the main characters themselves in kind of an ambiguous way. Uh, but regardless, the I, I really think that the only way this movie could have worked is for it to have recognized the truth of itself for what it is, and instead of tiptoeing around it or trying to soften it, and just embrace it, lean into it. And I really think that it did just that. And ultimately it, it knew what it wanted to be. It knew that it needed to have, have fun and uh, just be absolutely insane. And it was at every step and it really, really worked. And the interaction between the husband and the wife, it got a little bit, uh, eh, eye rolly in some parts, but for the most part, I did think it worked and it sold it pretty well. So 17 out of 25 points for the plot there. A lot of fun. The intent, I gave a 17 out of 25 as well. Again, a lot of fun, some great moments of violence and gore, uh, and even actually managed to squeak out some really tender moments in the quiet times uh, in really subtle ways that really connected with me, and I really, really did appreciate them. But uh, all the stuff that, if you could describe it as over the top, was really over the top with like a capital O over the top. Uh, and for what it was intending to be, I really think that it achieved it marvelously very above average in this category 17 out of 25 there the acting i gave an 18 out of 25 i was really genuinely impressed with the acting performances especially given what kind of movie this was kate bonsworth as nina west tyler hoechlin as mark west and i think the real standout here is lance reddick as nathan wood who was another survivor that they met across you know along their way uh i'm a big fan of lance reddick uh right down to his days in fringe and I mean, he's a really accomplished actor, and he really did not hold back for this role. He really, really embraced it, and I loved his character and how he portrayed him. So everybody did a great job, but Lance Reddick was the standout for me. Uh, the technical, I also gave an 18 out of 25. I was really genuinely impressed with the scope of this movie. Now, they had a $10.6 million budget, which I find surprising considering how under the radar this movie wound up being. But regardless, uh, it's still not... Uh, absolute huge summer blockbuster kind of movie, and they still managed to pull off a very convincing post-apocalyptic landscape and uh, a lot of really fine detail and costume design and character design and in so many ways, and as well as the camera work and the editing and the sound design being very, very tight and adept 
And uh, I was just genuinely really impressed with the technical aspects of this movie as well. It really brought the landscape to life, having these characters in it that were as marvelously detailed as they were. And that gives us a total score of 70 out of 100 points. If the idea of a Mad Max meets the Warriors meets Blue Valentine, if that tickles your fancy, then I would absolutely recommend it. If you want something a little bit more cerebral, a little bit uh, more toned down and uh, you know not quite as uh, thrill right action kind of horror, this would be one to pass on and maybe kick on another day. But as it stands, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it and I think that you will too. But that should about do it. That is my review of 2018's The Domestics. I really thank you for joining me here today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.